co-founded a tech startup called Showkit. We help companies deliver live, interactive customer support to their mobile app users. We like to say it's like being there, in, it's the next best thing to being there in person. It's like remote desktop technology, but for mobile. Real quick visual, um, the support agent can see and navigate the user's screen uh, while in a video chat as if they were both there at the same time. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how I got here. A few years ago, I was recovering from a nasty tonsillectomy in San Francisco under the care of my parents. Um, this was an operation that I scheduled in part so that I could miss two weeks of work. And I think if you would rather have an organ removed than go into the office, it's safe to say it's not going well. <laughs> uh, more than a week in bed left me with a lot of time to reflect on that job. It was stable, nine to five, predictable, slow, and boring. Um, I had some pretty typical 20-something-year-old angst. I was restless, I didn't feel like I was contributing through my work, um, and I wasn't inspired. So while I was convalescing in San Francisco, I started, up, I started meeting up with old college friends who had moved to the city. Not a big surprise, but many of them had started working at tech startups. And so I founded my own company. Thank you. <laughs> no, obviously, um, I'm kidding. But those friends of mine loved their work in tech. They were learning on the job, they were experimenting, uh, they were being creative, they were building things that they cared about, and they had influence over the work and direction of their companies. I dug through my old alum college alumni network, people I had never met, and I emailed them. My message was simple. I would like to break into tech. Can you offer any advice? Can you think of anyone else I should talk to? That list even included Parker Harris, who's one of the co-founders of Salesforce, and I didn't realize it then, but he's kind of a big deal. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I went back to my job, and I quit. And then I panicked. The economy wasn't great. I was worried that there wouldn't be a place for me at, the tech startup, at a tech startup. But after one month of job hunting, I started working in a very entry-level position at a tech incubator here in LA. It's called Curious Minds. I didn't set out then to be a tech entrepreneur. After all, those guys are guys. <laughs> they are programmers. They graduate from Ivy League schools. They build their first computers when they're five years old and have sold, you know, 10 companies by the time they graduate college. I just wanted to be close to and work for the innovators and the builders and learn as much as possible. So entrepreneurship to me is about creating opportunities and of course solving problems. And entrepreneurs adapt to change, great ones even see change coming and plan accordingly. And then there are those who themselves with paradigm to shifting ideas create that change in the world, which almost always, in my opinion, is for the better. It's a really exciting place for dreamers and creators and hard workers. But like I was saying, I didn't set out to be one of them. Did any of you see the recent uh, South Park episode on startups? Yeah, maybe. Um, it was riffing on the idea that with luck and the right attitude, that entrepreneurial archetype can make millions through a startup. Uh, the refrain was, Start up, cash in, sell out, bro down. <laughs> and I don't know how to bro down. <laughs> Few of us get to the startup stage, so why don't we focus on starting up and actually doing good work? So with the benefit of hindsight, uh, here's a quick recap of how Showkit got to where it is today. My co-founder Anthony Kalani and I launched Showkit out of the Curious Minds Incubator in August of 2013 with $210,000 in seed funding. We landed our first big contract that November. By May of this year, we were on stage at the TechCrunch Disrupt startup battlefield, pitching to Marissa Meyer, Chris Dixon, and other big tech executives. And we were one of six finalists. In June, we flew up to Silicon Valley at the invitation of two of the most valuable companies in the world and we're still negotiating those deals. Also in June, we secured another 230,000 in investment funding. 
This past month, we signed our first enterprise contract with one of the largest telecommunications companies in the world. And in September, an executive at Vodafone, the biggest telecommunications company in Europe, uh, presented our technology during a press conference at the IFA Consumer Electronics Conference in Berlin. We've brought in over $500,000 in revenue since May, and we're planning business trips to India, Germany, um, and a couple other places in the next few weeks. And we're opening our Series A investment round. But I will tell you what. Everything I said is completely factual, but if you think that that is uh, you know, the, the full story and exactly how it happened, then we can probably all go home now and not have taken anything away from this. What I just shared is a very, very polished version of events. And I think it's pretty typical of how we talk about startups and how startups present themselves publicly. We really edit and perfect uh, those startup stories, which seems to be expected, especially if you're raising money. And when we do, we end up burying all of the lessons and all of the challenges that had to be overcome. We take the adversity out of those things that don't really, uh, when we take the adversity out of those stories, um, and we take out things that don't fit that mold. And then suddenly, successful founders um, and the companies they start all tend to look the same. All of this is a roundabout way of saying that um, I was going to share some of the less glamorous aspects of what has gotten me and my company to where we are today. And of course, if you're going to create a startup, you're gonna have challenges. Remember how I was saying that we landed our first major customer just two months after we started? Pretty cool. After nine months of using our technology, they never paid us a damn thing. <laughs> really. And then they canceled the contract. I had spent months negotiating that deal. We even promoted their product publicly. And I've lost plenty of other deals before contracts were even signed. We're very efficient with our cash and have a tight budget. And even so, we have come to meet what seems frighteningly close to just running out. At the same time, we know that we, ha that we need to scale up our development work in order to actually bring in more revenue, which requires more cash. Those things are scary, and it happens, you know, it's a daily struggle. Uh, we've pitched to hundreds of people who either don't understand or just really don't care about what we're doing. And with, um, with that comes rejection, or worse, the string along game that goes nowhere. Some potential investors have told us to our faces that they don't believe we have what it takes to lead a company like ours. We sometimes don't think we have what it takes, but that's called self-reflection. And then here we are running a company. A few months ago, I was speaking to a fairly high profile person at a networking event who said to me, Look around, a really grand sweeping gesture. These, some of these guys are millionaire entrepreneurs. You should try and marry one of them. You'll be set. <laughs> and I've heard that kind of thing more times than I'd like to count. So building ShowKit was and still is a lot of work, a lot of uncertainty, and sometimes I want to strangle everyone that I work with. And to be honest, we're still down in the trenches, uncertain of what the company will look like next year, let alone next month. But what I can tell you is that I believe we're doing really valuable work. Vodafone wants to use ShowKit to connect with their mobile users in more personal, meaningful ways so that they can provide real support and not just add to their customers' frustration. There's a startup that wants to use ShowKit to connect veterinarians to animals' owners so that they can help pets remotely. And another company is doing something really similar with mental health. It's really rewarding to watch that happen. I hope no one minds that I didn't come up here and teach, you know, like the 10 points to becoming a startup entrepreneur or, you know, entrepreneurial success. Um, I'm still learning so much myself every day that that would seem really silly. Said, I just hope that I leave you uh, with the takeaway that all startups struggle and that it's most definitely worth it. Thank you.